Thank you, Alan. Imagine being vulnerable to an aggressive world-class predator known for its size, speed, and bad attitude. Tonight, I have an amazing story of a Gulf Coast diver. He found himself in a potentially deadly situation 70 miles south of Perdido Pass. He not only survived it, he has incredible video of his unforgettable experience with a fearless shark, considered one of the most dangerous marine predators for humans. It's a story you'll see only on News 5. The blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico are exquisite. Look at the scar. You see the scarring on the side? This guy's been in a lot of fights. Her beauty on this January day inspired shark hunter Lance Williams to grab his camera instead of his spear. He never imagined he'd come face to face with this. I just recoiled my feet in, and all I had was the camera. I just shoved the camera at the shark, and right at the last second, he veered off. And uh, he got between me and the boat. And at that point, for there was that one second where I, I thought it was a Mako, but for a split second, I thought, this thing is so big, this could be a white shark. What it was, a Mako, a seven to 800 pound beast. This big guy was just up from the depth, right on my fins. And, for, and, and he came or did it, he did a kind of a quick U on me, and I said, this guy's about to bite me, and dear Jesus, save me. <laughs> and, uh, and, then he, and then he did, he just, he curved around, and, and that's when I was able to come up and yell, send me a gun, you guys gotta send me a gun. His buddy threw him a gun, but Lance didn't catch it. I look behind me and the gun is just sinking off into nothing. The shark is here between me and the boat. I just made the call to go for the gun. I dove down and as I began my descent and abandoned the surface to get the gun, I saw the, the big shark angling in on me and I just kicked as hard as I could. I got the gun. At the last second, I was able to, to, to extend and, and keep the shark off of me. And at that point, uh, everything just got really cool. You know, the shark started working with us. We were swimming. Lance made it back on the boat, but he couldn't resist going back in to rendezvous with a massive creature. I just jumped in, jumped right on top of him. The Mako, very docile, allowed Lance to touch him and divers to get this amazing footage. But that changed when they decided to feed him a 40-inch barracuda. I'd been eye-to-eye -eye with this shark for approximately 20 minutes, just looking him dead in the eye as he would come by me and just watching his eye move as he would pass. And it was like we had an understanding. At that point, he had a different look. And so I just had a sense that he's going to take a shot at me. And as he came in and turned, I just extended the gun. Instead of touching with my hand, and I just gave him the little pat, the warning pat, and when I did, he, he turned and snapped, and I said, it's time to go. Lance could have easily killed the killer shark and brought in a once-in-a-lifetime catch, but he didn't. I know it's a shark, and I know it would eat me if it was given the chance, but in that moment, it just felt like a, a bit of a bond. And so I let it live. I let it swim. A lot of folks have given Lance grief for not bringing in this man-eating Mako. But as you heard him say, he bonded with this majestic creature. And to give you an idea of just how huge it is, remember I said the barracuda they fed the Mako was 40 inches long. This is 40 inches. If Lance gets another chance, he doesn't promise that he'll let him go next time.